In this video, we're going to be looking at some forbidden LEGO sets that may never see the light of day, and for very good reasons. LEGO is known to be a very family-friendly brand, and though they've recently moved on to make more complicated sets for adult collectors, there are still some rules that apply when it comes to making sets for the future. When it comes to embracing its fun for the whole family image, LEGO has been very strict about licensing sets that can be too violent or downright criminal. That's why you'll never be able to see any sets based on World War II or minifigures based on certain historical figures. And even though we can get sets for fictional wars like Star Wars, you'll never see a set based on a more bloody properties like Breaking Bad or Scarface. So for now, let's have a look at some of LEGO's forbidden sets that have sparked some serious controversy on the internet. Starting off is the 2012 Jabba's Palace set, which was considered your standard LEGO Star Wars set. Based on the scene from Return of the Jedi where Luke Skywalker walks into the alien gangster's den to stave a frozen Han Solo. The set was expected to be more of a modern update on an existing Jabba's Palace set, but what LEGO wasn't expecting was an angry response from some Turks in Austria about how the set was considered offensive because it looked like an existing monument in the form of the Hagia Sophia Mosque in Istanbul. The backlash got enough attention that LEGO was forced to release a statement. They said the model in question was not based on any real building, but rather depicts a fictional scene of Jabba's palace on the planet Tatooine from Star Wars. The company regrets that the group has misinterpreted what the LEGO Star Wars set depicts. Needless to say, the set wasn't pulled off shelves, but it was definitely odd that it got that much negative attention in the first place. There are several LEGO sets out there right now based on the iconic TV family, The Simpsons, but the company actually snagged a little problem when they were gearing up to launch the first Simpsons that's back in 2014. As it turns out, there are some fans who weren't so keen on bringing more adult-oriented cartoons into the LEGO space. With LEGO having kids licensed for more radical properties, looking at you, Star Wars, it didn't seem like the call to keep the Simpsons from LEGO managed to stick. After all, as one Twitter user said, it was only about time because the Simpsons were already the right shade of yellow. Any LEGO fan knows that Octane Corporation was a fictional LEGO brand that started out as a gas company. But back in 2014, the real-life gas company, Shell, had teamed up with LEGO to release Shell-themed sets that you could buy at any local Shell gas station. While it did seem like your usual licensing agreement, LEGO was met with criticism from environmental activists and Greenpeace had released viral marketing campaign which featured the Arctic LEGO set getting drowned in oil. The video went viral and LEGO confirmed they wouldn't be renewing their partnership with Shell, ending its Shell sets entirely. Which is weird considering how much petroleum is used to make LEGO, but at least we know Octane isn't harming anyone in real life, right? With LEGO Star Wars being such a prominent brand, it would be no surprise that we get more than one Star Wars set that has been the center of controversy. Back in 2016, LEGO released a new UCS set dubbed The Assault on Hoth, which was supposed to depict a rebel base from earlier scenes in The Empire Strikes Back. Though the set doesn't feel like a regular Star Wars kit, the fact is it was branded as a UCS one, which puts a lot of expectations into the build, and a lot of hardcore fans weren't too pleased. So far, the single Snowspeeder felt like the centerpiece of the whole set, and everything else from the turrets to the cannons to the garrison were considered a bit lackluster, especially for a price point that a UCS set was asking for. Assault on Hoth is also considered to be the most negatively reviewed UCS set so far, but at least it does show that LEGO has learned its lessons from releasing half-baked sets and branding them under their UCS line, and now they're putting out sets like the Cantina under a new line called Master Builder Series. So far we've been talking about banned LEGO sets, but did you know that one particular minifigure managed to gain the ire of an entire fan base? Taking a leaf out of Willy Wonka's book, LEGO decided to release a limited edition figure alongside its series of blind bats, featuring a unique minifig of Mr. Gold. It was said that only 5,000 Mr. Golds were made, and it led a lot of fans to go out of their way to seek out this highly sought-after collectible. It got so bad, apparently there were some scalpers who would end up trying to sell their Mr. Gold figures for upwards of $3,000. He's even said that there were LEGO employees themselves who would feel around the bags for Mr. Golds and pocket them before they would hit the shelves. There were even some collectors that would buy full boxes of blind bags only to return them if they didn't manage to find Mr. Gold. Not to mention, there were also some bootleggers who got in the, around the hype and started peddling fake Mr. Golds into the market and pricing them at the same price as real ones. LEGO may be firm on its stance not to promote war and military, but they may as well have found the next best thing with their police figures as a part of the LEGO City brand. If you remember back in 2020, there were massive protests, so anything promoting police had become a huge problem for LEGO's marketing. And for whatever reason, they swiftly decided to remove police sets, including stations and cars from their market. Before you get bummed out that the city collection will be lacking any of the boys in blue, the sets are still very much available for purchase today. They were only temporarily removed as a result of the protest, and LEGO has since found a different way to try and market their kid-friendly cops and robbers. Speaking of police, LEGO is also about to release a set which was focused on the villains of LEGO City in the form of the Crooks Hideout Raid. The idea was to have a building that would serve as the robber's base of operations, complete with a giant sinister looking dynamite at the top of the building. Well, this would have been really fun to put next to your police officers, LEGO suddenly decided that they didn't want to put criminals in the spotlight of the set. Going back to LEGO's policy never to create any sets which would promote real world war, the company was originally set to release a set based on the military plane, the V-22 Osprey. The set was originally branded as some kind of search and rescue vehicle, but at the time it was clear that only the military was using them. So 
10 days before LEGO's official launch, they decided to cancel the release of the set. Interesting note about the Osprey though, while it was officially recalled, there were still some that made it out early to vendors and they could still be found on some markets online, even though they're pretty rare and extremely expensive. Though licensed LEGO IPs like Star Wars and Harry Potter come with several skin tones for the characters, that didn't used to be the case. Early on in the series, back in 2000s, everything was just plain yellow. There wasn't any problem until 2003 when LEGO decided to make their Cloud City set and decided to release alongside it a Lando Calrissian with a brown skin tone. This led several groups getting angry at LEGO, saying that the introduction of a brown skin tone meant that all the yellow figures so far were meant to be white. LEGO decided to remedy this the next year, introducing light skin tones and updated minifigures of other licensed sets. They did, however, keep the classic yellow skin for the original LEGO brands like Ninjago and City. Now, LEGO may have struck lightning with a bottle when they came up with LEGO Star Wars, but they've tried to spread out another Lucasfilm property with Indiana Jones. While there were new LEGO sets based on the whip-cracking archaeologists that were being released since the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, 2023 had announced the release of a set based on the Temple of Doom, complete with flaming river of lava and a precarious minecart track. The set apparently made it as far as having promotional images leaked online, possibly for toy fail retailers, but LEGO had decided not to officially release the set. We don't know what reasons they came up with for not pushing it through so late into production, but the possibility that someone found the depiction of the Death Cult not suitable for an official LEGO product is likely. Blizzard's Overwatch already had a bunch of tie-ins with LEGO sets, but recently with the launch of Overwatch 2, there were plans to release a kit based on the Titan mech that was showcased in the Overwatch 2 cinematic. The set was expected to launch around 2022, but was decidedly cancelled by LEGO because of the controversy that was surrounding Blizzard's higher-ups at the time, forcing the company to cut ties with the video game developer. Though the sets were a officially cancelled, it's said that some products were able to go to retailers early and some have been able to buy it off eBay. There's some hoping that LEGO could get a change of heart soon because Microsoft acquiring Activision and Blizzard, but for now it looks like they're going to be putting the Titan on ice. The LEGO Architecture series featured some iconic buildings from around the world, and they were ready to release a set that would give collectors a miniature look at the Las Vegas skyline. The set was originally set to come out in 2018, but following the mass shooting that occurred at the Mandalay Hotel in 2017, LEGO was forced to pull the set seeing the depiction of the Mandalay in the lineup. LEGO eventually decided, however, to release a new Las Vegas Strip set, with the Mandalay being switched out for the Bellagio. However, some of the sets containing the Mandalay managed to hit some retailers early, and it was said that they ended up getting some sold somewhere in South Africa. Before LEGO Spider-Man was a thing, LEGO would release sets based on movies under the LEGO Studios banner. Back in 2002, around the same time Sam Raimi's Spider-Man was released, LEGO was planning to come out with a set dubbed Wrestling Scene, which had a minifigure of Peter Parker in his homemade fighting suit and Bonesaw McGraw, played by Randy Savage. It's unclear why the set was cancelled, but we did get a similar set which includes the Green Goblin and its glider, with Mary Jane clinging onto it for help. I guess they didn't think that Bonesaw was the interesting enough villain, but a lot of fans have been pretty vocal about how it would have been nice to get Peter in his homemade suit, plus that figure of Randy Savage. And that's our list for Forbidden Lego sets. Which of these did you find most interesting? Do you think that some of them deserve to be cancelled? With all that said, God bless and stay awesome.